I'm going to run through this website using a voiceover assistant as a screen reader to see how well it can read the contents of the page so we can get a sense of what non-sighted or visually impaired users might be experiencing when they try to use this website. I am not an experienced voiceover assistant user. I'm not visually impaired or non-sighted. I, I think that's helpful to get the experience of, of what folks who use the screen reader have to encounter. Okay, I'm gonna try to assess this website for accessibility, specifically for folks with visual impairment. First thing I'm going to do is enable voiceover. Welcome to voiceover. Voiceover speaks descriptions of items on the screen. On entering icon 3 dpdx web content. Link. Skip to content. Banner. You are currently on a link. To click this link, press control, option, space. So this is good. This is the first thing that you hit when you tab in on the website. And that is especially useful if we have one of those big mega menus that some of the larger e-commerce sites have where you're just going to be reading links for 10 minutes straight. If we try to do control option space. Group. You are currently on a group. To interact with items in this group, press control option shift down arrow. Link. Request a quote. You are currently on a link. To click this link, press control option space. And theoretically, if I enter here, I'll get to the link. Icon 3D. No action available. Image. Link. Skip to content. Visited. Link. Image. Icon 3D PDX. Visited. Link. Home. Link. What we do. Link. What we made. Link. Markets. Link. Talk to us today. Heading level 2. Let's talk. Ready to work with Icon 3D on your next project? Getting started is simple. List four items. 1. Tell us about you. 2. Tell us about your project. 3. We'll get back to you quickly with a quote. 4. Kick off your project. Link. Info. At. Icon 3D PDX. Dot com. Link. 503. Here I'm going to hit enter to see if this link opens. Nine open FaceTime window in open FaceTime group. Five items cancel button cancel button link. You are currently on a link. To click this link, press control option space. So this here is not a link. I'm not sure why that got activated, but you can see how scrolling through this website went in a logical order and read things with simplicity and there were no hidden kind of like texts or anything unexpected. So, so far so good, at least as far as using a screen reader. Zoom in, zoom out, link, in, keep, map, link, link, first name, required, edit text, name, required, group, one password menu available, press the down arrow key to select. I'm going to pause here and point out a few things that I think might be helpful. And I'm right clicking and choosing inspect to open my web inspector. And as I highlight some of the HTML over here on the right, you can see it highlights it on screen on the left. So what we'd really want to see here is a section tag, but that's not a huge deal. And then inside we've got this heading tag, H2, that's also good. This is called semantic HTML. And screen readers will look for this sort of thing to identify certain parts of the page. It's also good for SEO. And if you think about it, all a web crawler is is a non-sighted browser. It has to understand a website by understanding the structure of the code. So I'm going to pull up some documentation on semantic HTML. So this is a section tag, and you can see over on the left, there's a menu of all the different semantic HTML tags that are available. There's also article tags. Sometimes if you're writing a blog article or something like that, you could be using that instead. If it's sort of like a sidebar, there's an aside. So anytime you use a sidebar that's not necessarily related to the main content of a website, you might want to consider using this tag. The W3C is a great place to go for all of the accessibility standards, and they've got it broken down really well. One thing to really look at is this content structure. So that's where they talk about articles, sections, paragraphs, lists, etc., and how best to structure those things as well. Forms is crucial. I would really pay attention to that one because that's what you're eventually trying to get your users to do is to contact you or do something via a form, pay for a thing. And that's often where folks with visual impairment and non-sighted users encounter the most friction. So let's look at that form a little bit closer. Last name required. Edit text. One password menu available. Press the down arrow key to company name. Edit text. Article. Email. Required. Required. Edit phone. Edit text. Phone. Group. You are currently on email. Uncheck. Checkbox. Preferred method of contact. Group. You are currently on a checkbox. To select or deselect this checkbox, press Control, Option, Space. 
And just a note here, I've hit enter on my keyboard, which actually tried to submit the form with none of the form data filled out. So that's why you're seeing these red boxes everywhere. So that's just user error on my part. Check. Email. Required. Email is required. Required invalid data. Edit text email. Article. One. Phone. Email. Check. Checkbox. Preferred method of contact. Uncheck. Okay, so here when I was in an actual form control, I was able to hit enter and check the box and uncheck it appropriately. So that's working. So that's good. You are currently on a checkbox. To select or deselect phone. When is the best time to reach you? Required. When is the best time to reach you is required. Required invalid data. Edit text. Scope of the project. Required. Scope of the project is required. Please include details about your project. Invalid data. Edit consulting. Uncheck. Fabricate installation. Uncheck. So one thing here with that project focus is that that's a lot of stuff to have to kind of tab through for a user. You may want to consider that being like a select box or have an other or make it so once they click a button, they can see all of those options and fill them out if they want to, but make it optional. Project time frame required. Project time frame is required. When do submit button. You are currently on a button. To click this button, one password menu available. Press the down arrow key to select. First name. You are currently on a text field. To enter text in this field, type. One thing I want to make sure of here is that there's a way to get into that section and have it actually read that it's a newsletter sign up and not just jump straight into the form because you wouldn't have any context for what this form is versus the last one. And it's like the next thing in the tab order. So it'd be confusing because you'd think you were in contact and all of a sudden you're in the newsletter. Now it may just be that I need to know what the keyboard command is to jump to a new content section. So I'll look into that. So this is the voiceover user guide for Mac. I'm sure Windows has a similar one. You'd want to actually check how things perform on a PC. And these are all the keyboard commands. Okay, this section looks particularly helpful. Navigate web pages as opposed to content, which would be other types of applications running on your Mac or your PC. Mac has a thing called the voice voiceover rotor. Let's check that out. To hear an item's help tag, press voiceover shift H. Default navigation mode could be helpful setting that to web since that's what we're focused on. So we'll see if we can get that active. And it looks like these are landmarks in a web page that VoiceOver recognizes, such as banners, sidebars, content info, main, navigation, and search. So speaking of navigation, I want to go back into the website and make sure we're using that nav tag. And you can see over here in the right nav, we are. So that's a good semantic HTML tag to use anywhere there's navigation so not just your main navigation but say down at the bottom too press control option shift down arrow so let's try that control option shift down arrow let's look at our voiceover utility settings in mac so we could cut down on verbosity for now for testing at least i, I want to keep it high but i imagine experienced users might change this setting here's web Navigate by DOM order, that just means sequentially through the way the code was written. Theoretically, it should just kind of follow in a logical order. So if we advance from the contact form, we should see the footer afterwards. Here we see that section tag, but there's nothing in it. Really, all of these should be using those section tags. Maybe the one we saw shouldn't have actually had a section tag because it's just not that important of content. Should have been a div or something like that. So yeah, if you were to navigate this via DOM order, it would proceed in a, a logical sequence through the page. Okay, so I paused and I familiarized myself very quickly with this grouping items method of navigating. So we're going to give that a try here kind of on the fly and see if we can navigate around this website via groups. So I'll turn on voiceover, which is on a Mac. Command F5. Welcome to voiceover. Okay, so I just clicked into an area. I'm not sure how someone would do this if they weren't able to see and click into one of these arrows. But now that I'm in one, full tell, tell us about you. I can navigate you the elements in that group. Inside of a group. You are currently on a text element inside of a group. To exit this group, press control, option, shift, up arrow. And control, option, shift, up arrow exits out of that group into the next logical grouping. Out of group with two items. Okay, so we can see that group was just the text. And then if I do control option shift. Out of content list for items. Content list. I'm in this content list. 
And now if I just do control option and up and down arrows, it should navigate to the next group. Control option down. Link info at icon3dpdx.com. Link 503-954-1021. Group with three items. So that makes sense. It did work. What I'm going to try to do is in the verbosity, turn off the speaking of instructions and see if that allows us to navigate without all those lengthy instructions now that we're starting to understand this. 1,427 N.W. Davis Street, Portland, or 97,209, link, group, with three items. Okay, so that did work. It stopped repeating all those extra instructions. We're going to have to hit Control, Option, Shift, and Up to exit out of this and navigate to a different group. Yeah, now by continuing to hit up, we're in this major group. And now we'll go to the next one by hitting Control, Option, Down. Group, with five items. Keyboard shortcuts. Button. Group, with three items. Okay, so now we're in the map. Group with 13 items. Group with two items. So I hit control option and over to the right, and it jumped me to the contact form. This should really have a heading that says contact form rather than about you. Something that makes it clear they should be expecting a form here. As you can imagine, you know, if you got here via the talk to us today link on the main navigation, you're going to expect that there's contact forms somewhere, and you're going to be looking for that form. Okay, so now I'm going to get into this form and just see if I can navigate around. So I will go Control Option Shift down. 13 items in group with 13 items. 12 items, name, required, group with three items. And if I hit Control Option down again, it should take me to the next section, which is, I think, address. I can't see it. Company name, company name, edit text, group with two items, email, phone, group, group, auto group with 13 items. Okay. So that is working as expected. Out of name, required, group, com, group phone, preferred method, submit, button. Okay, so that's a weird one. It jumped to the submit button after outdoor signage, skipping budget and time frame. When do you need the project completed? Group with two items. Project time frame, required, required, edit text, group with two items. Interesting. So the only way to get to that is by going backwards. So that's not good. You should look at why that might be happening. Okay, I'm in the form element for the web inspector, and I just want to see if there's something weird happening with the HTML that would make us be missing that field. There's this empty div, which we should delete, but then we're in the field list element. And then we've got a field set for these two form items, so that's, that's proper use of the field set element. And a div, another div. So we're progressing in a way that makes sense. Field set here. It maybe is weird that we have a field set for the phone because there's really only one form element there, so you don't necessarily need a field set. And then we've got this field set for the project focus one for the project budget, one for the project time frame, form contents. Maybe that's the weird thing. This has all of the form elements. But the submit button is not inside of that. It's outside of it in its own div. Insert that into the form. So the entire form is just in one div. And that would fix your tab order. You may want to try that. Okay, so let's just see if we can get to the next section after this. Horizontal splitter. Name. Required. Out of group. With four items. That's a sort of two-column thing with the let's talk in the form. Control option down. Group with two items. Group with two items. Footer with two items. I want to go into this. I hit Control Option Shift down. Two items in footer with two items. Two items. Group. Group with two items. Group with two items. And again, this thing two shouldn't items. be its own div. It should probably be inside of with this. Control Option Shift down. Two items. two items. Two items in group with two items. Five items in group with five items. Five items. Two items in group with two items. First name, last name, edit text, blank, edit text, blank, group, with two items. Email address, edit text, email, blank, one password menu available. Press the down arrow key to select. Email address. Okay, it's a little weird also that the first name and last name are in a group, but not the email address. Those should all be in the same group. Weird that hitting down, skip the subscribe button. Subscribe button. And again, if I go backwards, I hit the subscribe button. So definitely should fix that one so that people can easily 
actually submit this form. So what I would recommend is that you go through all of these pages with the voiceover assistant using tab order with the DOM or using the group option in voiceover assistant. Make sure that you can navigate in a way that makes sense and keep note of any things that seem weird. A web developer or an accessibility expert can help you fix those things. The other thing that you can do on your own is run an accessibility tools extension in your browser to identify things that it finds, and we'll cover that in a separate video.